I'll admit it, I'm a harmonizer. That's the self-appointed name of Fifth Harmony superfans who've been following the girl group's meteoric rise since they were paired together by the evil geniuses of X Factor in 2012. They first came to my attention when they recorded a song my boyfriend wrote called Dope, an epic ode to New Jersey teen love. I adore their videos, throwback confections where these beautiful, diverse girls roll on a beach or work a sweaty construction site in very impractical footwear. They're pop, plain, simple, and joyful. Fifth Harmony reminds me of 1999, the year of candy and genie in a bottle, when it seemed like low-slung cargo pants and coordinated dances with your camp friends were the height of sensual appeal. I've always been especially fond of Fifth Harmony member Camila Cabello, who, while looking like a femme fatale, projects a goofy affability even when singing about lust that makes watching her delightfully human. I caught up with Camila over the phone this December before she headed to play the last Fifth Harmony show of 2016 in Brazil. What I didn't know was that it would be her last Fifth Harmony show ever. I've been doing all the research on the history of your career, (laughs) and you started out on X Factor being put directly into a girl group. And obviously there's an amazing creative history of girl groups in America, but like as we've gone on, they've become more manufactured. And I wondered how you felt about that being the start of your career and how you felt about sort of being put into this sort of preconceived creation and what that experience was like for you at 15 and how it's evolved. Man, to be honest with you, I always say I'm so grateful for that opportunity because I wasn't raised to become a part of the entertainment industry. Like my family, they, like people sing for fun and my grandma loves music, but there was nobody that ever did this professionally. And I came from a place where it wasn't like I came from LA or New York where there was people around you that were trying to make it. And it was kind of like people actually had a chance or a shot at success. Like I came from Miami, like completely Cuban family. Like we immigrated from Cuba when I was like six years old. And there was really, nobody thought that there was like a a plausible like shot or chance at having success. I always kind of looked at that as like a very far away thing. And um, when the X Factor came close to Miami, because the auditions were in North Carolina, it was my 15th birthday and I wasn't going to have a quinceanera. So I asked my mom instead if her present would be for me to, um, for her to drive up with me to audition. And I actually auditioned because I was like a huge fan of One Direction at the time. And I was like obsessed with them. And they had uploaded a video on YouTube where um, they were giving tips to audition for X Factor USA. And so I just had like five seconds of bravery. And so I auditioned and I didn't make it. They chose me as an alternate. And so for two days, I was like right about to go audition. And they would tell me, oh, no, it's, like, you you can't audition. Like, you might as well just go home. I had my whole family there. And they were like, we don't want to, you know, have you keep getting disappointed. You might as well just go home. And I was like, no, just give me a shot, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so I ended up auditioning um, because they saw, like, how badly I wanted it and how persistent I was. It's a Cuban thing. And and so I got to audition, and then I got four yeses, went to boot camp, didn't make it, and was put into my group. And I was so stoked. I was so excited that it that it wasn't over because I wanted to just keep going um, on that journey. It was like so new and exciting to me. And I was like a kid in a candy store. And you, you know, you write your own music. And there's a real like one of the ways your like fans seem to really respond to the fact that you there's like a real like authenticity and silliness and genuine aspect to you. And that's a really special thing. So how did you feel about being put into a situation that wasn't necessarily totally authentic? And how did you sort of like find the authenticity right. in being put into a group that wasn't your creation, wasn't your choice? Like, how did you find the you in there? I think, to be honest with you, that's how I, I found the me in there. Because I think that creativity and me writing in hotel bathrooms for the whole time that we were touring became a necessity. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of myself I found through making art and making and making my songs. That's kind of how I found my voice. And being in a group where we didn't necessarily write our songs and it wasn't necessarily representative of us individually. It was more kind of like the group identity. Like I always say like Fifth Harmony is kind of a character or a person outside all of us. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we would all make different styles of music and individually we are 
totally different than what we represent in the group. You know what I mean? And therein lies the problem. There's been speculation for a while that Camila might go solo. She's released a successful single, Bad Things, with Machine Gun Kelly, also known as My Problematic Hall Pass, a sort of pop version of Badlands about doomed millennial love that samples a fastball song released when Camila was just one years old. She had another hit with teen idol Shawn Mendes called I Know What You Did Last Summer, a title referencing a movie released the year she was born. What was shocking wasn't the announcement of her departure or the subsequent statement issued by the remaining members of Fifth Harmony saying she'd left without notice and by giving word through management. Neither was her rebuttal, claiming she'd kept them in the loop for months. It was the pained, desperate, and overwhelmingly vitriolic response of many of the harmonizers, whose sweet, sweet love had turned dark AF overnight. The rage can be classified into three categories, with all haters calling Camila canola oil, FYI, which is neither clever or particularly mean, just fully random and weird. There are the people angry because they think Camila split up the group. These are the OG Fifth Harmony stands, the ones who support the other girls, Normani, Dinah, Lauren, and Allie. Yes, I know those names by heart. They call Camila a snake. They use the dreaded snake emoji. They think she's always been planning on going solo. My response, so what? Cool. They think she used the group and the girls for her own fame, etc. Then there are horrific, rude, bored people, mostly teens themselves. They use the most racist slurs and derogatory language. Kids, where the heck are your parents? They don't care about Fifth Harmony as a band, unlike the first group. They just want to see Camila and a variety of other pop figures fail, no matter what charming. They're obsessed with bad things doing poorly on the charts, even though it's actually climbing them. They all loved the split because it gave them an excuse to have a hashtag Camila is over party. Can we all agree that in 2017 we should have a hashtag blank celebrity is over party is over party? Like, can it be over and then we will party? The last group are the most high level in their conspiracy theories. These people deadass believe, as the teens would say, deadass is a cool teen term, that this was all orchestrated by management, and one fringe group even thinks that Camila and Lauren, another Fifth Harmony member, are passionately in love and being torn apart. Their one true pair name is Cameron. I will not give any of these groups the dignity of reading their tweets aloud, but will say that even as a card-carrying member of the sexist death threat club, these shocked me with their venom especially considering the majority of them were coming from children not old enough to buy cigarettes, directed at a very lovely girl not yet old enough to drink. So you have all this music that you've been writing throughout the time you've been in the group that's almost like this almost private diary of your experience of becoming known and becoming famous and becoming a public figure and becoming a woman. Yeah, that's so cool. I hadn't even thought about that. But it's like when I look back on my laptop and all the songs that I'd written, I can literally see the evolution of like when I was 15, like when I wrote about having my first kiss, when I wrote about my first heartbreak and disappointment in in a friendship with somebody you know what I mean like I have like a soundtrack to listen to when I'm super old of like how I felt like during all these times in in my life which is really cool do you feel connected to that music still like do you feel like you'll want to put that music into the world so that your fans will understand the journey that you've been on some of them I mean there are definitely some songs that I'm like yikes you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone who writes feels that way. I look back on, I mean, anything I did when I was 15 is mortifying, but you're 19, so you're a little closer to it. Oh my God, no, 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 yeah. But there are definitely some lines that I'm like, cringe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely some that I still think are cool and I, and I would totally use. And if not some, then there's definitely concepts of some. Yeah, but... Some of those are definitely going to have to be tweets, girl, because damn. (laughs) I was like, why don't you text me back? (laughs) What Camila just described is becoming an artist. It's the process of growing and learning and metabolizing life through the work you create, the stories you tell, and the risks you take. She has a desire to share that work, to share her perspective, to be autonomous, and through that autonomy, grow into a fully formed creative force. It would make logical sense that the people committed to her career would want to follow her there, share in her authentic vision of herself, and through that, access an authentic vision of themselves. But in this modern landscape, fandom seems to demand a kind of impossible loyalty, 
A sense that just as the fans are living for the artist, the artist is living for the fans. In their statement about Camila's departure, the remaining four members of Fifth Harmony say, Harmonizers, we are in this together. We love you with all our heart. That's a beautiful sentiment, but it's an almost medieval loyalty to people you've never met and may never encounter beyond a heart eyes emoji. Who made these stakes so high? In Camila's response, she says, I just want to lead by example when I say to each of you guys to be courageous in the pursuit of what makes your heart pound and what makes you come alive with purpose. Our happiness is our own responsibility. I have always encouraged you to be fearless, to live your life in the name of love, and to do what makes you happy, as scary as it is to take the leap. I am excited and full of joy because I know that no matter what happens, I am following my heart. And isn't that what you'd hope for someone you claim to love? I'm actually not on, like, even though I tweet and I go on social media and I post, I don't go on it as much as I used to because I'm a Pisces and I'm too sensitive for that. Like, if I literally, if I see one comment, I'll just, like, be thinking about it for a long time. And I just... Girl, I feel you. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't handle that. It's, like, it's so hard to, it's hard enough for anybody to figure out, like, you know, who they are and, you know, that kind of coming of age and realizing who you are and what you stand for. And it's hard to do that with a thousand opinions in your head. Camila, this is so inspiring and exciting, and it's fun to be a 30-year-old woman and to go into my day, like, psyched and inspired by a 19-year-old girl. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm so so inspired by you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're a real love. It was nice speaking to you, Lena. Love you. Love you, too. Bye. What a fucking cutie to the max.